Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome to lesson 46 in the Intermediate Algebra series. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to solve a single variable inequality. So, we've got a single variable inequality, and the reason why it's a single variable inequality is we have one single variable, x, and we have an inequality symbol, which is the greater than symbol in this case. And so other common um, inequality symbols are greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or less than or equal to. So anything involving these is going to be an inequality. And uh, basically, the way we're going to solve this is we're going to pretend like this is an equal sign here. And then we're just going to solve it just like we normally would a normal um, single variable equation. So the only difference is between solving an inequality, really, and a single variable equation is if we were to divide or multiply by a negative number, we would need to flip the direction of the sign. So I'll show you that in the second example, but let's just go ahead and work on this first example. And uh, basically what we're going to do is we want to get x by itself on one side. So we're just going to subtract 4 from each side in order to do that. 4 minus 4 gives us 0, which leaves us with just an x on the left-hand side. And then we just rewrite the greater than symbol, just as if it was an equal symbol. And then 2 minus 4 gives us a negative 2. So basically this is the answer to the single variable inequality up above. So what exactly does this mean, x greater than negative 2? Well, this is a set. And if we were to just kind of look at this on a number line here, let's say that's the value 0, and we go negative 1, negative 2, so we'll just call that point negative 2. And if we were to just kind of sketch a graph of all the values greater than negative 2, we would kind of end up with something like this. And so basically, what this set is telling us is it says we can choose any number that is greater than the value negative 2, so anything that's shaded in here, and then we can plug that in to where our x is, and we will have a true statement. So, on the other hand, if we choose a number that's not defined in this set, a number over here, if we were to plug in any number on this side, then we could plug it in and we would have an error. So let's just go ahead and just kind of show you what I mean by that. So if we were to just grab a number in our set here, let's say that this value is negative 1. So negative 1 is greater than negative 2. So it satisfies our set. If we were to plug negative 1 where x is, 4 plus a negative 1 gives us a positive 3, and positive 3 is greater than 2. So we just chose a random number that is in this set, and we show that it satisfied this condition. Now, if we were to choose a number out here, let's say negative 3, well, it's not in this set. It doesn't satisfy this condition. Negative 3 is not greater than negative 2. So if we were to plug in negative 3 into here, we would end up with 4 plus a negative 3, which is 1, and that is not greater than 2. So basically, anything defined in this set will produce a true statement up here, and anything that is not defined in the set will produce a false statement up here. So that's what this means right here. These are the x's that will make the above statement true. So now that I've kind of covered the basics of what that means, let's just go ahead and show you what I meant when I was saying you need to flip the sign when you divide by a negative number. So we're just going to do a real simple example here. We're just going to do negative 3x is, we'll just do greater than 9. So negative 3x is greater than 9. And uh, basically, we're just going to treat this as an equal sign, except for we're going to flip the sign whenever we multiply or divide by a negative. So we're going to divide the left side by a negative 3 so that we get x by itself. And we're going to divide the right side by a negative 3 as well, since we have to do whatever we did to the left side to the right side. So negative 3 and negative 3 cancels, giving us x. And since we divided by a negative 3, we need to flip this sign the opposite direction. So the greater than sign changes to a less than sign. And 9 divided by a negative 3 is negative 3. So this basically says, let me go ahead and just rewrite what we started with up here. Negative 3x greater than 9. So this is basically our solution set right here. And it's basically, we'll go ahead and graph it out real quick. If that's our 0, we'll just say negative 3 is over here somewhere. So if x is less than negative 3, so that would be this side, 
So anything over here should satisfy the original condition. So if we were to pick negative 4, we could plug negative 4 into here. Negative 3 times a negative 4 is 12, and 12 is greater than 9. Now once again, if we were to pick something that's not part of this set, we will end up with an error here. So if we were to pick the value 1, which is not in this set, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, which is not greater than 9. So everything over here basically does not satisfy the original condition. Everything that's in the set, everything over here, will satisfy the above condition. So that's the basics of solving single variable inequalities and the meaning behind their solutions. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys next time in the next tutorial. So have an excellent day, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.